Tour de Provence, stage two was a pretty exciting stage, 100k to go, there was a big crosswind section, direct energy were the main instigators of it, there was a big break going across about eight or nine minutes, it really whittles down to the big boys, but I want to just talk about Ineos today because I think their tactics seemed very curious to me, so they managed to get four guys in the break, which was probably everyone they wanted to except Ethan Hayter, he was going pretty well on the time trial and the, with the climb that's not crazy steep, this weekend, it probably make, makes more sense to ride for Hater. But anyway, they got Carapaz, they got Viviani, they got their two strong guys on the flat, which was uh, Ganna and Ro. So they got them all on the break. And now, basically, you know, the break just rotated and it all was fine. And to be honest, they got Carapaz to do quite a lot of work towards the end, which I didn't quite get. And I think the key point to, to think about is when Bodnar went. So Bodnar went with about like 8 or 9k to go, maybe 10k. Um, and he launched it. And Alaphilippe chased, and it looked like Ineos were just a bit confused. And they decided to put Carapaz on the front. Now, obviously, they expected Viviani to win the sprint. So they just put Carapaz on the front as much as possible, which I don't really get. Because if he's not going for GC, then yeah, fine. But then why would you drill the brake so much? Like, yeah, stage win's good, but if you've lost the GC, which is generally what Ineos are about, it didn't make any sense. So I assumed that they were going for the GC with Carapaz. So they get Carapaz to do some work. Okay, like, maybe, you know, tomorrow's not too hard. And then Sunday, you know, he'll, he should hopefully be able to win the stage. But even so, it doesn't make that much sense why they got him to do so much work when you had Ganna and Ro, and Ro really didn't do any work, like, until literally the final couple of kilometres. So then you're like, okay, so Carabao's on the front, chasing Bodnar back. Ganna's, do, they start swapping turns as well. They bring out a fleet back. Then they get Bodnar close, and it was in a crosswind section. And Carapaz was, like, going so hard to try and, like, bring Bodnar back. And it was like, you know... A lot of the time it was tailwind, so bringing someone back in a tailwind is really hard. Cross tailwind is basically the same. Anyway, Carapaz finishes his turn, then Ganna absolutely drills it in the crosswind, so much so that he d um, drops Carapaz, which is fine. Carapaz is in the group. But then, when everyone then bridges across to get to Ganna, Carapaz then gets dropped. Carapaz loses another 25 seconds. Okay, Viviani wins the stage. But I would argue that their tactics today were really bad because they kept Rove for so long. So Ro really didn't have to do very much. Ganna did almost all the work, but Carapaz, like after Carapaz got dropped, but Carapaz did so much work that he lost 25 seconds. So he's now like 50 seconds behind uh, Alaphilippe, which on this climb, I think is almost impossible to get back. And like, they won a stage, but I argue they could have won a stage anyway if they just got Ro to do more, more, more work slash Ganna and not panicked as much about Bodnar because there are other teams who are really sitting back and relying on Eos. But I think the tactic of dropping Carapaz for a stage when didn't really make any sense because I honestly think that Viviani probably could have won anyway. And like, I don't think there was as much risk as they thought there was of Bodnar going away because Bodnar was slowing. And I think the decision just to sacrifice Carapaz entirely uh, was just not really the right one. And also it could have backfired because there's someone else could have attacked in the finale and he couldn't, they might not have even won. It was all for Viviani, which is fine. But like, if you're going to be a GC team and I assume that's what they're doing for this one, then it doesn't make sense to go all in for a, G, for, for a stage win with Viviani and leave your GC rider blounding out the back, like 25 seconds back, and your other potential GC rider in his second group, three minutes back or whatever they finished. So very odd tactics from Ineos. They did get the stage win, so you can't uh, fault them about that. But I thought GC-wise, they've really thrown it away today, to be honest, uh, without a fleet getting bonus points as well. Uh, it just is very odd tactics from them. But anyway, let me know your thoughts below. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.